Finnish drivers have won the World Rally Championship for the last five years, and no fewer than five of this year's works drivers are from Finland, so you could say the country is the spiritual home of rallying. Round nine of the series is certainly one of the most specialised events in the calendar. Fast, flowing, wide open roads and big jumps favour the local drivers, and of those, one man is a clear favourite, five times event winner, Tommy Mackinnon. Often when a driver competes on his home rally, there's a lot of pressure on him to perform. There seems to be very little pressure on you. Yes, it's not so not so much anymore. <laughs> I, I have done so many times already. I know the rally how to do it, and uh, and of course it is little bit uh, little bit some sort of pressure, and and of course because you are in your own home territory. Last year's winner was another Finn, Marcus Stronholm, but could he do it again this year? People are saying it's yourself, Tommy and Harry are the ones to watch. Anybody else? No, I think it's more people. I think Burns was quick last year, so he, he will be fast. Also Colin. For me, it's many drivers and it will be quite close, I think. It's your home event, so is there more pressure on you? No, 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 it's uh, okay, a little bit more pressure, but the, of course feeling is also much better because uh, there is a lot of friends for, of course, same for uh, every Finland driver, it's the same feeling. Winner of the event on three occasions, Juha Kankinen made a welcome return to the World Rally Championship as a guest driver for the Hyundai team. It must be nice to come to your home event. There seem to be an awful lot of familiar faces and everyone is very glad to see you. Yes, there seems to be and the people like you know that. Okay, maybe, maybe because I've done this rally, this is 21st time or something, so they, they probably know me quite well here. Richard Burns has never won in Finland, but came second in 1999. Last year, however, his rally ended in spectacular fashion. History shows us that normally it's a Finnish driver who wins this rally, but we've been very, very close on a, on a couple of occasions. And what we need is a little bit of a, a turn in our luck over this year, and, uh, and maybe we can do something about it. But, you know, it's, it's one rally. It's a rally I'd very much like to win. Colin McRae has also never won the event, but knew a finish and championship points were vital. What's the plan for you here? Just try and grab as many points as you can? Yeah, as many points as we can and hopefully get finished in front of Tommy if, if that's possible here. Among the other pre-event favourites were the Estonian Marco Martin and his British co-driver Michael Park in a Subaru. Making a guest appearance in a Mitsubishi was Tony Gardemeister. And finally, in another Subaru, the Norwegian joker in the pack, Petter Solberg. <laughs> the 21 stages that made up the rally were based around Yavaskula in central Finland, with days two and three run to the south, and day one, consisting of nine stages, run just to the north of the town. The rally that used to be known as the 1,000 Lakes could be called the 1,000 Jumps, and Tommy Macklin knows more than anyone how important pace notes are to warn of the dangers ahead as he blasted into the first stage. Notes also mark hazards in the edge of the road, but this was one the Mitsubishi crew had missed, and the team couldn't believe it. Very disappointed. We had 
we hit the three stamp in the inside the tight left corner and we didn't mention it dur during the recce and uh, well, we hit the stamp. The next car into the stage was the Ford Focus of Colin McRae and Nicky Grist and the sight of the stranded Mitsubishi was obviously good news for their championship hopes. Six left opens and six left and press into left tightens the three plus Duncan. Into four right plus nine and opens Duncan. Not a good start for Tommy. <laughs> yeah. What were your thoughts when you passed Tommy by the roadside on stage one? I can't say I felt that sorry for him. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, it was perfect for us, obviously, for the championship, for him to have a non-score, but we've still got to score points, which could be quite hard in itself to get one point here. Running third on the road, Carlos Sainz was down in eighth after the opening three stages, but at least that was two places ahead of teammate McRae. Fastest on the opening stage and second on the next, Harry Rovampera lay second, while Richard Burns got off to a solid start and was just eight seconds behind the Finn in fourth. Francois Delacour in the third works focus was struggling to find the pace and he was down in 14th, leaving local hero Yanni Parsonen to head the Ford Challenge in his private focus with a very impressive third after those opening three stages. And it would have been all finish affair at the top of the leaderboard as Marcus Gronholm went quickest on stages two and three to eke out a slender 3.1 second lead over teammate Robin Pereira. Norway's Petter Solberg was a surprisingly subdued ninth to the second Subaru nominated for Manufacturers' Championship points, while Estonian Marku Martin was just two seconds behind team leader Burns in a strong fifth place with the third work Subaru. The morning, however, had belonged to two Finnish drivers and their Peugeots. Marcus, that was a good morning's work. Yeah, yeah, quite good, yeah, not bad, but uh, still I'm not so 100% video card, and sometimes, so I, I, I try to find the feeling, but we had some uh, tow, tow out on, on, the, on one wheel, so could be the reason. Pleased with the morning's work? Yeah, I haven't felt 100% with the, with the car yet, the car's been fine, the tyres have been working well as well. But I just haven't really settled into the, the flow of things completely yet. Still maybe only 98% of 100. After finishing third on the last round of the championship, the Safari Rally in Kenya, Armin Schwartz was struggling both with the big Skoda and an ear infection. Hyundai's drivers were faring a little better, although Kenneth Eriksson had power steering and transmission problems on the opening morning. The Swede would end the day in 19th place, but it was the team's new boys who led Hyundai's challenge. Two Juhas, Rafo and Kankanen, would return to Javascular in 10th place. Tony Gardemeister, on the other hand, wasn't having such a good first run in the Mitsubishi. He'd be 22nd, but he wasn't the only one to be caught out by the slippery gravel. Carlos Sainz and Lewis Moyer overshot a junction and then stalled the engine. Ford's pit board confirming the time loss. Colin McRae and Nicky Grist moved past their teammates as a result and would be in seventh place by the time the cars reached service after stage six. After setting the quickest time on stage four, Richard Burns and Robert Reed were now third. But it was still a Peugeot 1-2, Rovan Perez second, and Gronholm extending his lead after going fastest on both stages five and six. It looks like a good fight with Marcus, but he's your teammate. Yes, but we not fight together. We say Richard is very close, and everybody but we will see tomorrow evening what happens. The last three stages of the day saw the works Fords begin to up their pace with 
Colin McRae setting two third fastest times as he moved to sixth, while Harry Robin Perra's good start turned slightly sour as he broke a shock absorber and dropped from second to fifth, which promoted teammate Didier Oriol to fourth. Petter Solberg suddenly came alive with three straight second fastest times, but Marco Martin still outshone him by going fastest on stage eight and moving into third overall. But the biggest surprise was that Richard Burns now led the rally as he set another fastest time on stage seven and then benefited not only from Robin Perra's problems, but tyre troubles for Marcus Gronholm, who seemed more than happy to back right off to end the day just three and a half seconds behind Burns and thus avoid running first on the road for day two. Richard, I think I'm right in saying that you're the first British driver to lead a leg of the Rally Finland. How do you feel? Pretty good, pretty good, yeah. It's always nice to, to lead any rally, but of course when, it, when it's one as specialised as this, then uh, it, it feels fantastic. Marcus, did you have a problem, or was that playing mind games with Richard? OK, I was watching the times, yes, of course. But I had also a puncture a little bit, so... But it was working anyway, the moves, so... I was scared before the stage that it would be a problem, but then I could uh, do normal the stage. But I was looking in the end, uh, I was slowing down a bit, yes. Who shouts the loudest? The Pater Solberg fans or the Marco Martin fans? I don't know. It, it seems hell of a lot of flags on the stages, so I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with their fans. So, two British drivers, two Finnish drivers, a Frenchman and an Estonian filled the leaderboard at the end of day one, with the biggest gap between Martin in third and Oriol in fourth. Leg two consisted of another nine stages, all but one of which were to the southwest of Uvascular, based around a service park at the military airfield at Halley. The early morning saw mist and moist stages, but there was no sign of the rain Burns had been hoping for. Sure enough, he lost the lead on the day's opening stage. A vibration from the rear of the Subaru suggests all isn't well. The puncture had cost Burns and Reed around 15 seconds. The Impreza was now in second place. Gronholm was then quicker on both the next two stages, extending his lead still further. The Marco Martin fan club was out in force, and they weren't disappointed. Their hero beat his colleague on all of the first three stages, and so the Subarus were now just six and a half seconds apart. Rovan Perra, in turn, set the fastest time on stage 11, the day second, and so was also closing on Martin. But McRae was determined not to be left out. He was now fifth, 45 seconds behind the leader. Six. Okay, six right over crest, 150. K crest and five left plus Titans and opens. Another Ford okay, driver, Yanni Parsonen, was heading the wrong way down the leaderboard. Hey, 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 hey. Parsonen had been third at one point, but his focus now resembled a pickup, and any hope of a good result was gone. Peter Solberg, meanwhile, was lucky to escape a similar fate. Long tightens, minus narrow, slow 30, four left minus, keep in, just slow cut shot, two right knee. Service at Halley, and Gronholm was a happy man. Marcus, second place at the beginning of the day, you now lead. Uh, good morning. Yeah, it's, it was a good morning, OK. Richard had some problem with the tyre, and we got a little bit advantage of that. But otherwise, uh, quite good drive, yes. We've just dropped sort of two two seconds and one second to Marcus over the last two, which is a lot less than I expected because they're actually new stages for me, and because uh, I didn't get this far in the rally last year. So, plus running first car, there's a fair bit of gravel, but it doesn't seem seem so bad, and I'm I'm just trying hard and trying to enjoy myself. Harry Robert Perra continued his charge back up the.
Field on stages 13, 14 and 15 with two more fastest times and was now back in second place. But teammate Didier Oriol's strong showing was about to come to a sudden end. Something broken and it was uh, harm suspension. And uh, after I have no possibility to control the car, so we have a big spin. Marco Martin jumped so high he flattened his Subaru's exhausts and robbed himself of 100 horsepower. He then had a trip into the scenery and it all added up to a drop from third to fifth. Colin McRae had his first fastest time on stage 14 as he continued to up his pace and he was now fourth. But for Yanni Parsonen, the dream of becoming an overnight sensation was now definitely over. Running first on the road and with no marks to follow, Richard Burns was beginning to struggle and he was 19 seconds slower than Robin Perra over the three stages as he dropped behind the two Finnish drivers' Peugeots, with Marcus Gronholm hanging on to an 18-second lead. Harry, how were those three? <laughs> it's going well. It's, anyway, it's uh, nice stages and good condition. And it's car working well now and no, no any problem. You're catching Richard now. Do you think you can actually overhaul him? We'll see how the next two go. Uh, we've, yeah, we've been quicker in the last two, so we, all we can do is continue at this pace and see what happens. Huh? Stage 16 saw the end of Juha Kankinen's challenge, the Hyundai retiring from 13th place. Uh, we lost all the brakes almost at the start, and there was still a little bit of brakes left, but then nothing when we came here. So, I mean, how can you drive because you can't stop anywhere, and I think it's a bit dangerous then to, to drive. Another former world champion and Rally Finland winner had no such worries. Carlos Sainz would be sixth at the end of the day, while Marco Martin's challenge had faded. He returned to Juvascular in fifth place. The top four at the end of leg two would consist of two British and two Finnish drivers. Fourth was McRae, quickest on the day's penultimate stage. Burns was third. Running first on the road had been something of a gamble, and it hadn't paid off. Rovampera would start the final day in second place. Fastest on four of the day's nine stages, he was now just 14 seconds behind the leader. Lucky that this puncture happened at the end of a stage. Gronholm had been quickest on just two of those stages, but only three more lay between the world champion and the second successive win on his home event. But would Peugeot want Rovampera to win and improve his chances of the driver's title? You're fighting now with your teammate. He has an outside chance of the world driver's title. Will you let him by tomorrow? Uh, we have not discussed anything about that. Uh, I, I hope it, we can fight to the end like normal. You're fighting with Marcus now. Do you think the team will ask him to let you win? No, you need asking a bit uh, in, the, in the our seat what we need doing. But of course, uh, of course, if everything's open, I, I try pushing very hard tomorrow. And both drivers emerged tight-lipped from the team motorhome, leaving their boss to face the media. I think that the best gift to our company is to bring these two cars in this position, and this is what we ask them to do. There's not a great deal, apparently, you can do about the two Peugeots, but is there anything you can do about Colin? Oh, I don't know until tomorrow. I don't know. When we're a little bit more on a, a level playing field tomorrow, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, I'm going to try and, and keep in third place. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but uh, I'll be trying. What's going to happen tomorrow? Well, we'll give it a go for sure, but uh, Richard has been at a bit of a disadvantage today, being first in the road, so obviously he's not got that tomorrow. And I think he will go a bit quicker, but we'll try in the first one and you know, see what the time's like. Obviously, we've got to keep the points in mind in the championship, so uh, we're not going to throw it all away for the sake of one extra point. The two Peugeot drivers had been told to hold station, it appeared, while McRae wasn't going to take any risks. Day three, however, would turn out to be anything but predictable. 
For day three, there were just three stages, totaling 96 kilometers. But they had all been run before on day two, so going first was a little disadvantage to Marcus Gronholm, who went third quickest on the day's opener. Teammate Robin Perra was less happy with his Peugeot, which was jumping around too much in the now rutted tracks. And he could only manage fifth fastest time, just beaten by Carlos Sainz, who had his eyes firmly set on Marco Martin's fifth place. Muy bien. Izquierda, izquierda, buena más ojo de tierra. Para derecha, buena más corta. Para izquierda, rápida, menos, menos. Colin McRae was second fastest on that opening stage. Another focus on the charge, with his target a 3.7 second gap to Burns in third. Medium jump to the left. 30. Five left plus open to the press. 30. Six right and six left over bump. In the turn, heavy right. But it was Burns who was quickest of all. No longer acting as road sweeper, he pulled nine seconds clear of McRae and closed to within six seconds of Robin Perra in second place. Gronholm looked secure in first, but it was getting very tight in the battle to be second best. Last night it seemed everything was more or less settled. Now it looks like the top four places are still open. Yeah, yeah, OK. I, I think we are quite OK in the first place. I hope. Harry, you lost some time on that stage. Why? Uh, I have the puncture after after five Ks of between five to ten. And ATS working, but uh, 30 Ks with flat tires, is, uh, that is very difficult. You're just 6.2 seconds ahead of Richard now. Two stages to go. Can you hang on? I try. 6.2 seconds. Can you do it? I mean, who knows? I mean, two stages left, yeah, but two monster stages. Um, and the last stage on in Poya is probably the classic stage of the whole World Championship. Uh, it was very, very difficult yesterday. We changed quite a lot of notes in it, so hopefully it goes better today. Sunday afternoon, Central Finland. Stopwatch poised, Corrado Prevera was midway through stage 20 to see whether Gronholm could hang on and whether Rovan Pera could hold off Burns to take a maximum 16 manufacturer points. At that midpoint, the stopwatch wasn't kind to Burns. Rovan Pera was slightly quicker, to the Peugeot team's unconcealed delight. Harry is five seconds faster than Marcus and Burns only two, which is good. Rovan Pera went on to set the quickest time, helped by some lightning quick reflexes. <laughs> McRae was second fastest, and so was now just under seven seconds behind Burns, with one stage to go. This was how the leaderboard now stood. The top four places covered by 33.6 seconds and only the classic Onimpoya stage remaining. Onimpoya, however, had a few surprises up his sleeve and the first to discover that fact was Tony Gardemeister, who'd been less than impressive on his first event for Mitsubishi. A little bit humble, a little bit too much on one one jump there, and and uh, we can turn for the next flat right, and, and we go a little bit straight and hit to, to stones, and then we roll, I think, two, two or three times on the road. Matthias Solberg made it through unscathed, picking up a point for the team by finishing seventh. Sainz scored the first of the drivers' points in sixth, while Marco Martin was fifth disappointed he'd not played a part in the fight for the podium places. But what of the top four? By now, Prevera was back at the Halley service park, one ear glued to the radio. As rally leader, Gronholm was first to tackle the stage. He looked every inch the world champion, the weekend a demonstration of the kind of talent which netted him the title last year. Next into the stage, Harry Rovampera.
then came a flying Richard Burns. And two minutes later, a charging Colin McRae. As Provera waited nervously, Gronholm and co-driver Timo Rautiainen reached the end of the stage. Stage is clear for Marcus. Well done, well done, thank you very much, well done. The news concerning Rovan Pera's car, however, wouldn't be so good. The 206 had a suspension problem. Burns set the quickest time on stage 21. The Impreza an amazing 21 seconds faster than Rovan Pera's sick Peugeot. When Burns reached the end of the stage, Provera could only listen to the Subaru team radio, congratulating their man on snatching second place. Peugeot's day would get worse, though. McRae had also edged out Rob Ampera. Second place had become fourth, and the French team needed encouragement to celebrate. How do you feel at this moment? Not very good, because we try very hard, and, and uh, some not very expensive problem today morning with the tires is the uh, valves is broken, and, and uh, now socks again. And, but that happened, that is wrong with Colin, a slightly surprised third. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even realise. I was looking at the seconds at the end on the board. Uh, that was, was great. It was very unexpected. I just wanted to, to be have a good, strong result here, finish on the podium. Um, we've been lucky the last stage that uh, that Harry's had that problem, but you know that's the way that's the way the rallying is, and you have to be in a position to be able to capitalise on it. And obviously, I'm very pleased to have uh, kept my position from from Colin as well. Yeah, it was not not the, not so easy, but okay, we had always a small gap, but uh, Harry was uh, catching us yesterday a bit all the time, and but uh, today it was quite conf I was quite confident to to keep the the, the pace. In the end, Gronholm's victory was a full 25 seconds clear of the frantic scrap for second, with Robin Perra losing that final podium place by just 1.6 seconds. Gronholm's win leaps him from 14th to 6th in the Drivers' Championship, while the pack in front all edged closer to Mackinnon, who now has a lead of just 6 points. With Mitsubishi getting a big zero, Ford now go first equal with them in the manufacturer's table, while Peugeot's happy weekend sees them move ahead of Subaru and into third. So, for the second year in a row, the cruelest of luck hits Harry Ravampera on his home event. The two men who benefited, of course, Richard Burns and Colin McRae. Those vital extra points means McRae has now closed the gap on Mackinnon, while Burns still needs a couple of victories if he's to play a part in the championship battle at the end of the year. Five more rounds remain. The next, round 10, sees the series make its longest journey of the year to Auckland for the Rally New Zealand.